The Lincolnshire Poacher is possibly the most famous and well-known number station to ever exist. The song it used gave the station a cult following later in its life, with people tuning in to hear its eerie musical introduction, and CD releases such as the now extremely rare Conet project gave it worldwide fame. This British intelligence station was used to send messages to spies and agents in foreign countries. The content of the messages has never been revealed, and we know very little information regarding this enigma of the airwaves. With no known start date, but first noted in the early 1970s, the Lincolnshire Poacher was the nickname given to this mysterious number station that was believed to be operated by the British Secret Intelligence Service, MI6. The station didn't broadcast from Lincolnshire, the signals originally emanated from Her Majesty's Government Communication Centre in Gorecott near Buckinghamshire in the UK, but later moved to the Mediterranean island of Cyprus. If you want to know everything there is to know about the Lincolnshire Poacher, then I'll link you to my full video in the description below, but for now, I wanted to share with you quite a remarkable story regarding the station. Almost a decade ago, in 2013, a magazine known as The Colonel reported on the famous mysterious Russian radio signal UVB-76, otherwise known as the buzzer. Almost immediately, they were inundated with anonymous tips from readers, one of which made them aware of the Lincolnshire Poacher number station. The Colonel said, according to our anonymous source, the radio signal ran from 1976 to 2008, far longer than has previously been reported. Just remember that quote for now. The anonymous source claimed that the Lincolnshire Poacher lived on as a secret telephone number for MI6 agents to receive encoded messages in the Middle East. Known only as Mr Bland, the informant claimed that after the Lincolnshire Poacher ceased operations in 2008, it was moved to a UK telephone number. Mr Bland even provided the number, which I'm only showing because it's freely available online. The number was a landline registered in Aldershot in Hampshire in the south of England. The colonel called the number provided by Mr Bland, and here's what they were met with. As you can hear, there was a normal ringtone, followed by a chime, and the famous Lincolnshire Poacher musical preamble. Then, a female voice proceeds to read out five-figure groups of numbers, just like the Lincolnshire Poacher did. Finally, you hear the tone, a string of zeros, another tone, and then the line goes dead. The colonel replied to Mr Bland after dialing the number, but their email failed to reach his inbox. The email address had already been deactivated. The following day, after numerous calls to the number, the Lincolnshire Poacher message system had been taken down. Instead of hearing the number station, 
callers were relayed a different message. So the phone rang as normal and the familiar chime plays but a different voice appears to tell callers that this number is currently unavailable and to use backup channel Romeo X-Ray 39 followed by end. The Lincolnshire poacher's secure new home on the phone system appeared to have been breached and it disappeared. The colonel along with several readers then received a text message from a different number informing them that the Lincolnshire poacher telephone number was restricted and requesting that they don't call it again. When the colonel tried to call the new number that the text message was sent from they were told that the number wasn't recognised. So that's the story almost verbatim. Let's look at the facts. The colonel said, quote, according to our anonymous source, the radio signal ran from 1976 to 2008, far longer than had previously been reported. Now, this implies that Mr. Bland said the Lincolnshire poacher ran until 2008 undetected, which isn't true. The Lincolnshire poacher ceased broadcasting in July of 2008, and the final station transmission to be recorded was on the 29th of June of that year. Now let's look at the numbers. I'm no expert in phone systems, but a secret phone number linked to MI6 wouldn't be traceable. The number was traced to Aldershot. Aldershot is home to a British military barracks, but nothing in the way of radio transmitters except a VHF forces radio site somewhere within the barracks itself. It has certainly never been linked to the Lincolnshire poacher. In the modern era of digital landline systems, the Aldershot link really means nothing. We can't guarantee that an Aldershot based number is actually in Aldershot. You could in years gone by, but in 2013 there would be no guarantees. The phone number is within a block of numbers assigned to a company involved in voice over IP, so it's more than likely routed to a computer somewhere else. Would a landline number be used for the purposes of relaying coded messages to spies? Possibly, and I say that at a real stretch, but there was no authentication sequence for the callers. This would be easy to do with DTMF commands or something else as a sort of passcode system, but nothing. The colonel just phoned the number and was given the message. Anyone who would need to use that number to receive encrypted messages certainly wouldn't reveal it publicly. Even an ex-spy wouldn't be stupid enough to reveal it, as it makes sense that a list of people with access to the number would be held on record, meaning it wouldn't be hard to narrow down who has compromised it. Also, the other number that sent the warning message wasn't hidden. I'd guess that a message from MI6 would be sent from an untraceable or withheld number, not a mobile phone number on the 3 network. Would MI6 even send a warning? I doubt it. First of all, this would serve as some sort of acknowledgement. They'd simply leave it in the hopes that people would get bored, after all you can't decipher the message anyway, or just change the number. So let's look at the message itself. We're first greeted with the Lincolnshire Poacher musical preamble. This was likely used on the shortwave version of the station as a tool for checking propagation, and ensuring recipients were adequately tuned in and ready to copy before the message was sent. It doesn't make any sense that this would be used on a telephone reincarnation of the system. Also, you can hear radio noise over the preamble, meaning it's a direct recording of the Lincolnshire poacher off the radio. If it was real, they'd use the original piece of music and not a poor quality shortwave recording. I compared the recording to the one on the Conet project and they're identical. After the music, a female voice reads the numbers and there's three points I have to make here. Firstly, the Lincolnshire poachers messages were always around 45 minutes long, the phone message isn't. Secondly, the groups of numbers on the shortwave station were always read twice to ensure no mistakes were made, the phone message only reads them once. Ok, a phone line is much clearer than a radio signal, but surely it'd be wise to read the numbers twice to make sure. 
there is after all such a thing as a bad line. And thirdly, inflection. The automated voice system, although sampled, was quite unique from a number station point of view because it used voice inflection on the last numbers in a group, giving a lifelike appearance to the transmissions. If we listen to the number groups from the Lincolnshire Poacher and then E11, you can hear the difference. A number in the middle of the group spoken by the Lincolnshire Poacher is spoken differently than if that same number was the last digit of the group. The phone message carries no voice inflection. I'd hazard a guess that this was somebody pulling a hoax, not knowing just how many people would pick up the phone and actually dial the number. Realising their mistake, Mr Bland probably messaged the warning as a way of discouraging people from ringing or sharing the number further. So that's my thoughts on this truly remarkable story. The only thing left to do is dial the number. Eight, eight, one, zero. 